Hello everyone, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Jordan Peugeot 195 from the 1995 Formula 1 World Championship. In the cockpit is Rubens Barrichello. Now a quick history about the car, the car itself was pretty much a lemon compared to uh, their 94 car. Going into 95, Jordan just had a pretty good season throughout 94. Uh, they scored their first podium, their first po uh, pole position and their best season since their debut year in 91. Uh, using the Hart engine, they uh, achieved, I think, about 25, 26, a good score of points anyway. I'm not sure how many exactly, but Rubens Barrichello picked up 19, um, as well as a third place, I think, at the Aida Grand Prix. So 1994 wasn't a bad season. Also had a better colour scheme than this car as well. Um, going into 1995, Jordan took a large, or a big step, basically, trying to uh, encourage... Uh, or trying to get hold of a works engine deal with the manufacturer and they took on, surprisingly for some, uh, the laughable Peugeot engine uh, which had uh, detonated every given opportunity while in the back of a McLaren. Uh, Jordan took on the engine for 1995 and things weren't much better although saying that the car wasn't much better either. Um, but yeah, the topsy-turvy colour scheme as well, the car is called pale green or blue Dark blue, white, red, yellow, pink, any colour you can imagine is on this car and it's not much to look at. Um, results wise, not a huge amount to go by. Uh, 4th, 5th and 6th is but a, a double podium at the Canadian Grand Prix was really the only highlight for the team. Um, I think Barry Kelly missed out on 3rd place. Uh, I can't remember what race it was but I think he, I think it was Hungary. He, he, he uh, ran out of fuel or, or broke down on the last lap, sort of a few metres from the flag and uh, lost third place. I think that was the only other time Jordan really looked online for podiums apart from Canada which was of course uh, a race of attrition. Uh, but yeah the Peugeot engine wasn't that much good. The engine had its uh, it had a sort of um, a kill switch design into the engines. Basically if the engine was about to blow up it would um, cut out before it actually blew up spectacularly so it basically it made the team look worse than the uh, manufacturer did. At least that's what I, what I heard um, over the years, that the, uh, the engine had a kill switch sort of thing. Basically it made the team look bad rather than the, the engine. Um, so uh, yeah, it did, didn't bode well for the Jordan's first team of Peugeot. Um, going into the year, the car had a different livery. It had a mostly blue livery uh, compared to this one. So this one's more white uh, and pale green. I was wondering if it's green or blue. It's sort of I'll say green, it's not a very nice colour. Uh, but they had an all mainly blue colour scheme at the beginning of the year, and I think by San Marino they had changed it for this livery. Um, various sponsors as well came and went. I think Autosport had a sponsor, uh, a vodka company had a sponsor, which is actually on the nose as well, actually. It's on the nose, but throughout the season they had it on the side as well. Um, and also a few other sponsors came and went. Uh, like I said, not a, a brilliant colour scheme. And... Uh, doesn't really bode well for this model. You can tell as well, it's, although I'm not really tell from the light, it's not a very good mini chance model. But anyway, we're on to the model now anyway. And uh, it's not a bad model quality build wise, but the uh, decal application is pathetic really. It's it's really rushed. I think, well, I say re rushed, I think it was quite a rushed into production. It's also quite dusty as well because it's. Uh, I haven't got a very good cabinet it's, it sits in. Anyway, decals on this car are pretty poor. If we look at the first one, the main one, which is well, the main issue, which is the side pod one. You can't really tell on this light, but you can see the uh, the join lines in the bodywork are, well, the decal is split. Also, the decal has yellowed badly as well, because I think the previous owner was a smoker. If I just... It does smell a bit smoky, so I think, yeah. The previous owner was a smoker. Not me, I didn't smoke. But the previous owner did. Um, the decal has yellowed. It could, uh, there's white paint here on this part of the body. Well, I can't really tell. The camera's not picking up very well. But the, the, the paint is there. White paint there. Then the rest of the le the area is white decal over the green paint. Um, and the green is actually showing through the, the uh, decal, which is not very good at all. It really shows the uh, quality of the decal. It's not very thick. And I just dropped it then. So yeah, that's that's one decal where there's an issue. Um, I think the other ones as well on top of the uh, the cockpit or top of the uh, monocoque. This decal here also is quite thin, so the the paint below, which is, which I think is green as well, is shining. Well, it's not shining through, but it's starting to go through the decal. If 
I look closely you actually see where the white paint ends and the next colour begins and the decal doesn't cover it up very well. It's uh, quite bad actually. I'll just brush a bit of this dust off. Or blow it off. There we go. But yeah, it's not a great model. Um, kind of goes with the car really. The car wasn't that great. But uh, yeah, the decals are quite poor. Also, plenty of paint chips as well. Decal chips, I've got a chip on there. Uh, the rear wing is a bit chipped as well, although it's not too bad. Uh, overall, yeah, not too, not not hugely bad, but it's not brilliant. You know, it's quite the the model itself, quality-wise, is pretty good for a mini chaps of the age. But the, the paint work, uh, the decal work rather, is pretty poor. The paint's fine. The paint is, you know, there's no chips on the paint, but the the decals, which there are an awful lot of them. Uh, see me chip left, right, and centre. Also, the one on the top of the side pod as well. The yellow one is is chipping as well. I suppose it depends if it's kept in its box, you know, un undisturbed by the environment it's in. It probably would have survived a bit longer. Um, as you can see, the decal there is yellow, and the white and the paint here is white, and it's still white very nicely. I suppose the uh, the nicotine from the uh, previous owner didn't help. In this thing, um, the box I don't have, which is called of sort of understandable for the condition it's in. But the box that it came in, um, well, it's sort of come in two boxes. It came in the uh, this sort of box. If I just zoom on under this one, it comes in, it can come in that box, which is the sort of standard mini chance box, or it can come in the sort of dealer edition box, which is sort of like this. You look at the center collection boxes, it's basically them, but instead of having the center motif all over, it's the um, black and white checkers of mini chance. It's a small box with a polystyrene inlay. I think I reviewed one, one or two before, so uh, yeah. If you review my Ferrari 412T2 review, then it comes in that box. So uh, that's the box it comes in, but I don't have it, which is uh, a shame. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else to say apart from that. This thing is covered in dust. I need to get a good clean. Anyway, let's go a quick look around the car. Look at its pros. Build quality wise, ain't too bad. Suspension's a bit loose. Actually, the suspension ain't too bad. It's the other Jordan I was reviewing, where it's a bit loose. But this suspension is not too bad. It's quite quite uh, solid on there. Uh, the front wing is quite solid as well. Look at the nose. I, th I always thought the nose went straight down to the front wing, but then it's sort of a a weird point there. But uh, anyway, that's that. You also got some strange flips or flicky up things underneath here, which are quite flexible. I'm not sure if there's meant to be a barge board attached to these, but they're quite sharp as well. So. They're flexy, they're very loose, they're very flimsy, and they're very sharp, so be careful of those. And a quick look underneath as well, I've got the Jordan 195. Well, actually, I haven't got 195, it's just a Jordan Peugeot. That's strange. Got the Pause Model R, got the 118, that's pretty much it all underneath. Look at the diffuser, got the details there. Not a huge amount of detail, but you know, it's not too bad. So look around the rear of the car, got the rear bodywork there, it all curves in. Very strange shape body car uh, bodywork or strange shape side pods I should say. If we I'll just lift up and just do a turn it around that way. You get a, a sense of how how the car is shaped. It's very weird shape. The side pods are weird on this car. And they're saying that they they did the same in the ninety six car as well. You can see the side pod openings are only there. Which I suppose re reduced the uh, cooling for the Peugeot engine, which I think the Peugeot engine actually needed a lot of cooling. Hence why it blew up all the time. Um, but yeah, this sort of this, uh, side pod design was used on the 96 car as well, although they did use another slot for the side pods on the 96 car as well. I will review that one next. I'm doing a sort of a, a, sort of a, a series of Jordan cars. I've already reviewed the 97 and 98 car, and I'm just going back to do the two previous cars. Um, and I've also reviewed the 91 car as well. So I might as well get the two previous cars out of the way as well. And then we can move forward. Um, anyway, I'll quick look around again. The cockpit is actually quite... The cockpit on this car is quite uh, compact. It does look a bit snug in there. But uh, it's not too bad. A lot of decal chippings on the driver as well. I don't think this model wasn't looked very wasn't looked, looked after very well by its previous owner. And I'm blaming the previous owner, not me. Take a look at the detail there. Very weird steering wheel. Well, not weird, but just strangely shaped. So it does turn there as well. You can really see the dust on this car. It's awful. But, uh, if I can get hold of a one in better condition, this one will go on eBay. 
and uh, let some other poor salt put up with this car. But yeah, I picked this car up, I say I picked it up, I picked it up on eBay about eight, nine years ago and it was about £25 at the time, but it's because it's without the box. And of course eBay, oh the price of these cars has gone up a lot since then. Um, so yeah, it was about £25-£30 at the time. 2007, you know, that eight years now, and that, yeah, the summer of 2007. Um, yeah, it's not not a brilliant model, but it, you know, if you, it adds to the collection. If you're a Jordan fan or just a Formula One fan in general, you know, it will look good on display. Um, but yeah, it's not not brilliant. I wouldn't recommend. Oh, well, I wouldn't recommend it as a brilliant model. I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't recommend paying a lot for it. This car is pretty rare now. It doesn't pop up on eBay very often. There are a couple I've seen over the past few days but they're at silly money. Uh, one is about the same condition as this and it's sort of relisted every week. Um, other ones are sort of buy it nows which are pristine and in the uh, poly uh, proper box as well. They tend, they tend to be at about £100 but that's you know buy it now prices so I wouldn't uh, consider going for that unless you're uh, really into these cars. I, I'm really into these cars but I would not pay that money for them. Um, but yeah, ridiculous how these cars have gone up in price. Um, let's do another quick look around the car. I've done the uh, rear of the car. Just look at those side pods again. Look at them there. Not much inside them, but you can sort of get the idea of how how narrow the gap is on these car on this car. There ain't a lot to go with air wise. Also get a good look at the nose as well. All the decals on there. They're quite nicely applied on the nose, but though saying that. There is white paint with decal stuck on, so there's not going to get any ridiculous fading that like you get on the side. But it does, it does look ridiculous. You know, it's, it is a shame that it's gone this way for a car which is what well, will be 20 years old this year. Well, the car itself is 20 years old. The model's probably a bit less, probably about 19 years. I think it come out at the either at the end of the season at the time or into the into the new season. It's probably early 96. This car is released. But yeah. Um, of course, there is the Eddie, the Eddie Irvine ver uh, version as well. Um, basically, the same thing, just number fifteen with a red helmet. Um, also, it was released as a show car for nineteen ninety six as well. It's basically this car uh, with Barrichello and Martin Brundle in the car, uh, painted in the early Benson and Hedges colour scheme, which is basically a beigey yellow, sort of more green colour. It's not not the uh, gold colour that we're all used to. Um, really really creamy colour, not a very nice looking colour to be honest but it's basically this car with that colour scheme and it's not very nice to look at as well also I've seen some videos on YouTube as well of uh, Colin McRae driving this car at Silverstone in 96 it's basically this car again but in the proper gold Benson and Hedges colour scheme um, Colin McRae doing a few laps at Silverstone <laughs> pretty good actually um, Maybe it's just either a publicity thing, or maybe he was considering actually joining Formula One. I don't know the full story, but uh, of course that's history now. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this car could be a good candidate for that conversion. You know, paint this thing all in the Benson and Hedges gold, and put Colin McRae in the car, because this thing really is a state. Um, anyway, nineteen ninety five was out the way, and uh, the team moved on into nineteen ninety six with better hopes, also with better sponsors as well. So I shall do a review of that one next, the 96 car. So this is Rich signing off, logging off, disappearing, and I shall return with the 196 review. So uh, bye for now.